my name is Martin Cormican. I'm the HSE Clinical Lead for Antimicrobial Resistance and Infection Control and a microbiology doctor in, in Galway. It's difficult now for us to imagine what life was like before we had antibiotics, but there's a story I think that tells this. A hundred years ago, so in 1921, Winston Churchill's two-year-old daughter Marigold got a sore throat and a cough and after several weeks of illness she died of septicemia um, with an infection that um, would have been easy to, easy to treat now. It's, it's difficult for us to imagine um, that the rich and the poor um, were so affected by infections that we now can treat so easily. And this place where we're making this recording today was opened in 1953 um, to treat tuberculosis. And again, um, my mother would have known people who came to here, here with tuberculosis and who never left. And again, that was transformed um, by the advent of antibiotics. So when antibiotics came first, people called them magic bullets because it was like magic in the difference that they made to people's lives. So that's why antibiotics are so important to us. Why is antibiotic soil resistance important for our health? Well, I left medical school in 1986. And there were antibiotics that I could use with confidence in 1986 that I can't use with confidence now because the bugs have changed. So increasingly now we use backup antibiotics that we didn't need to use in 1986. But now we're having problems with the backup antibiotics as well and we're having to use the last line antibiotics in some cases. And in the last couple of decades, we're starting to see some trouble with some of those um, last line antibiotics as well. So the reason antibiotic resistance matters is because already now, today, it's making infection harder to treat. The link between um, human and animal health is that there are many bugs that are equally happy to live in, a, in an animal or in a person. And if the bug becomes resistant to antibiotics, then when it moves from an animal to a person, it brings that antibiotic resistance with it. The same is true the other way around, of course, is a bug that becomes resistant in a human can also go to a, an animal. So anything that makes bugs more resistant, whether those bugs are in an animal or in a human, matters to all of us because the bugs move around. The other thing we've learned a lot about in the last number of years is that not only do the bugs move around, but the genes that carry the antibiotic resistant message also hop between bugs that live in humans and live in animals. And that makes the problem even more difficult to control because even if the bug doesn't want to live in a human, the gene from the bug can jump into a human bug and it can, and, and can spread that way. So that's what the connection is and that's why it matters. A very simple example of how bugs that might be antibiotic resistant move from animals to humans is suppose a farmer is working on the farm and there's an antibiotic resistant bug in the feces of, of a cow. If the farmer touches the rump of the cow or maybe touches a gate that there's feces on um, and then goes in for a cup of tea and a sandwich and doesn't wash their hands carefully on the way in then the bugs are going to end up in the sandwich and the bugs are going to end up in the farmer's gut um, and if the farmer makes a sandwich for the kids while they're in the house then the bugs are going to end up in the uh, in the kids gut as well so that's a very simple ordinary way that bugs move between humans and animals and again one of the key messages there is the importance of cleaning hands when uh, when you're leaving the farm to reduce the chance of taking those bugs that might be antibiotic resistant with you the most important message for me about um, covid is just how much it is one health and one world in relation to infection so the virus that causes covid we we believe came from an animal and it crossed into humans and we've seen how quickly it spread all over the world and that's true of other infections also including antibiotic resistant bugs and um, they can move between animals and humans and they can spread all over the world uh, very quickly um, and the other thing that strikes us about the COVID thing is that we see how important it is that we have something that's effective to treat an infection because of course when the COVID pandemic started out we didn't have any um, treatment that was effective because it's a virus. Um, antibiotics don't work against a virus. And we didn't have an antiviral that was very effective against that uh, virus. And so we can see that the harm that was done by the infection was so much greater because we didn't have an effective agent to treat it. But I did grow up on a farm and there are things I remember, which is that animals that are well cared for get sick less often and need antibiotics less often. And of course, 
vaccines, and we've seen how wonderful vaccines are with COVID, um, vaccines will also reduce sickness in animals and will reduce the need for, for antibiotics. Um, but antibiotics are needed sometimes, um, and nobody wants to see an animal uh, suffer, so it is appropriate to use antibiotics to treat animals when they're needed. So when antibiotics are needed, a key thing is to use them as they're recommended, use them at the dose that they're recommended, use them for the duration of time that they're recommended, and to stop using them when they've done the good that was needed to do. That's good for the animal and it's good for everybody because um, if you only use antibiotics as a, a, in an animal or in a person, if you only use antibiotics when you need them, and if you only need them for as long as you need them, that's how you get the most benefit with the least harm. We have made a lot of progress in Ireland and in Europe in the last number of years in relation to antibiotic use. Uh, antibiotic use in animals is reducing. Um, there's been a huge commitment to that by uh, farmers and veterinarians. And we do all need to work together. Um, and we are working also with um, human health side to reduce antibiotic use. And we've some, seen some good signs of change there also. So we are making progress. We continue to work together. Um, we can make this better and what that means is that for all of us that our children and our grandchildren are likely to have the benefits of antibiotics that we have enjoyed um, through most of our lives. Thank you.